Hello everyone, welcome to Astara Psych, and today I want to talk about the differences between Carl Jung's original theory of personality and the Myers-Briggs model that we know of today. There's some really interesting differences between how Carl Jung originally thought of personality types compared to how Myers-Briggs adapted the personality types that Carl Jung created into her own system, the Myers-Briggs model. And I kind of want to talk about how those things changed over time and why they changed. Let's get into it. So the first thing I want to be upfront and clear about is that Carl Jung certainly acknowledged the possibility of 16 personality types or more, and he explicitly does this in Psychological Types by noting that the cognitive function stack is made up of four functions and therefore can vary depending on what the secondary slash auxiliary function is. But the difference in how Carl Jung originally created the types is in the importance and the role of the dominant function as well as the attitude of the tertiary function because there's some changes that people tend to not be aware of when they look at the Myers-Briggs model compared to how Carl Jung originally developed his system. So I don't want to spend too much time discussing the dominant cognitive function because I have an entire video dedicated to that one topic which is titled the importance of the dominant cognitive function and I will either link to it here on screen somewhere or in the description box below. The general idea that Carl Jung had, though, that differs from the modern Myers-Briggs model is that the dominant cognitive function is the primary part of the personality. It is a extreme majority of who we are as individuals, and the auxiliary and tertiary functions don't play as much as a part as many of the more modern models tend to think. Now, Myers-Briggs actually agreed with this interpretation from Jung, and in her book Gifts Differing, she categorizes the personality types by their dominant function and not by their temperament, which to me shows that she also agreed that the dominant function was a large part of the personality. The general idea here is that the dominant cognitive function is what essentially determines what Carl Jung's original types were. So the INFJ and the INTJ both lead with introverted intuition, and thus in Carl Jung's system, the introverted intuitive is a type. ESTJs and ENTJs are both extroverted thinking dominant types, and thus in Carl Jung's original typology, they would both be TE types. And this differs from the Myers-Briggs model because it's not distinctly classifying the auxiliary function. And Carl Jung proposed that the auxiliary function didn't play nearly as much as a role as we tend to think of it in the more modern models. But from my personal experience, this doesn't tend to be the case, and we are often able to see the influence of the auxiliary function. Now, the reason Carl Jung thought about this in this way is because he tended to notice how significantly the dominant function impacted someone's life. And this is also because the repressed function or someone's shadow is going to be one of the things that tends to hold them back in life. And this is why I believe Carl Jung wanted to focus on the dominant function because there is more potential for growth when focusing on this function and the repressed compared to the auxiliary and tertiary functions. Now let's talk about the second major change from Carl Jung's original typology. Carl Jung, again, proposed that the dominant function was a large majority of our personality, but he actually believed that it was so overwhelmingly strong that every other function in one's function stack would be in the opposite attitude. So, for example, an introverted sensing type would have extroverted thinking and extroverted feeling, as well as extroverted intuition as their repressed function. Now, this is quite interesting because almost no modern model takes this approach, and when you look at the published Myers-Briggs instrument, they even acknowledge that Carl Jung had this approach in their interpretation. But through practice, many of us tend to notice that this doesn't tend to be the case. So, for example, when we see an ISTJ, we see secondary extroverted thinking and tertiary introverted feeling fairly easily, and it's not quite often that we're going to see someone who shows symptoms of being an extroverted feeler and an extroverted thinking type. So this is why I think that Carl Jung hadn't really mastered this concept just yet, but there is a reason that I think he thought of this during his typology process. The reason I think Carl Jung believed this is because I believe that the tertiary function is the most malleable and changeable of all the functions within one's function stack. And what I essentially mean by that is that the tertiary function is going to be pretty much the only function that's going to be likely to show traits of being in the opposite attitude compared to the auxiliary, repressed, or even dominant function. And I believe it's because it falls into this relatively unconscious state, but it is not repressed like the 
uh, repressed function is. So this leads to a function that's kind of just in this gray space in the personality. It is almost a blind spot. It's not something that we actively think about, and therefore I don't think it develops in such a strict way like the dominant or auxiliary function. Now this isn't to say that I think it can be in the opposite attitude, but I am saying that I think it can present traits of being in the opposite attitude like its opposite function. All of this is quite interesting to me because these are things that we tend to really see play out when we look at them in practice. So for example, when I'm typing people in my typing business, the first thing I look for is their dominant function. I'm looking for the primary way in which they engage with the world. I'm also looking for the repressed function, the way in which they're struggling to engage with the world or they're ignoring. So I don't look for their temperament. I don't look for if they're an NT or an ST or an SF. And the reason I don't do this is because there's not a one-to-one -one correlation between the dominant and auxiliary function in terms of usage. So if you look for someone's temperament first, you're going to really struggle to find out what their type is because there's going to be quite a few types within a single temperament and you're going to be exploring all of those possibilities. In my opinion, it's much easier to start with the dominant function as Carl Jung saw, start with one of the eight types and then go from there into dividing the, into the auxiliary functions as well as the tertiary function. It's going to be much easier to start with one of the overarching categories than work your way down. Going back to the tertiary function, I also find that this tends to play out in practice as well. So for example, I personally believe, and this is just personal thought, that the tertiary function is the one that differentiates people of a singular type the most. So for example, if we took 10 ESTJs and lined them up, the level at which they've developed their extroverted intuition is going to be the biggest difference in how that person's personality plays out. They're not going to be the same in terms of their intuition. Because ESTJs all have dominant extroverted thinking and secondary introverted sensing, they tend to be very similar on these levels. Their core values as dominant extroverted thinking types are usually very similar. Now they're going to have individual interest differences, but the thing that guides them in life, their goals are often very similar if you look at them through an archetypal lens, through a lens of a category. But their extroverted intuition or their tertiary function is going to be the thing that often points them to their subtle interests as individual people compared to overall interests as a type through extroverted thinking. So let's take a minute and kind of explore the possibility that maybe Jung was right. And let's say that maybe the dominant function is in one attitude and all three functions are in the opposite attitude. What would such a personality type look like? Well, I think in such extreme cases, we're likely to see someone who is all in on their dominant function. And this is how Carl Jung explained the types in his book, Psychological Types. He almost explained them as a portrait of that singular cognitive function. And I think this is maybe why he thought that the tertiary function was also in the opposite attitude. Because if someone were to theoretically be 100% in on their dominant function with no external development, maybe the tertiary function would be in the opposite attitude. This is something that we're not entirely sure of. And maybe this has something to do with personality disorders or something of that nature. All of these possibilities are things that I've really mulled over in my head over the past few years, because it's really interesting to think about how such a personality type would play out, how a person of a pure personality type like that would be. And for a while, I thought maybe even Carl Jung was right in reference to the dominant tertiary functions, because as an introverted intuitive dominant myself, I've never really struggled with extroverted feeling as much as you tend to see the uh, stereotypes play out on different descriptions and websites. And I thought that, you know, maybe I do have extroverted feeling, but I think over time I've realized that's certainly not the case. And I certainly see within myself introverted feeling. But it is to a level of development where I think that we can see some of those traits associated with the opposite attitude of that function. For example, as an INTJ, I enjoy helping people and teaching people personality. I enjoy helping people discover more about themselves. This doesn't come from a place of extroverted feeling, though. It comes from a place of introverted feeling, or at least that's what I see in myself. But it is really interesting to ponder the possibilities of these concepts being true. To me, I think Carl Jung originally saw the eight original types as kind of the overarching archetypes of personality within humans throughout history. So for example, when we look at fictional characters and mythologies throughout all of history, the characters are likely to fall into these very pure archetypes. You're not likely to see the extreme level of personality development that we see in the more modern versions of personality systems. They tend to fall into this idea of all in on one thing and ignorant of another thing. And I think that's what Carl Jung was seeing, especially since he spent so much time studying archetypes and how they displayed themselves throughout history and within people. 
Let's look at Greek gods and goddesses, for example. If we look at Zeus, he's almost a pure representation of the function of extroverted thinking. He's quite literally the god of gods in the Greek mythology, and he is the commander archetype. If we look at Aphrodite, she is the goddess of love, beauty, and fertility, and she would be a great representation of extroverted feeling, and she's almost a pure representation of this. She doesn't even have the traits of the other functions. For one final example, we can look at Ares, the god of war, who is most associated with extroverted sensing. It is quite literally him who chooses not to stay in heaven, but to be down on the battlefields below, fighting, enjoying the physical activity of war. All of these fictional characters, all of these mythological representations are associated with the archetypes that I think Carl Jung noticed within people. All right, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this discussion on Carl Jung's eight original psychological types and how they have evolved and changed throughout the years into the more modern systems that we have now. I'd like to let everybody know that I recently opened my Asura Psych Discord server to the public. So if you'd like to come in there and say hi, I'm usually in there at least once a day to say hello or answer some questions. And you can find a link to that in the description box below. Other than that, I'd like to remind everybody that I do have personality typing sessions available at my website, asurapsych.com, if you're interested in working with me to find out your personality type and what that means for you. This has been Asura at Asura Psych. Have a good one. <music>